What's up guys, Axis here, back with another tutorial and today I'm going to be showing you how to create this bubbly looking mesh inside X particles in Octane Render. Obviously you don't need Octane, but I felt like I got the best results by doing rendering in here. I didn't do much post-production at all, um, it's just kind of increased saturation and a little bit of curves adjustment, um, but pretty much this is the uh, raw render, minus uh, a couple tweaks. So yeah, you can get some really good results just using this uh, technique. Um, and here's the original scene, if I just send it to the live viewer. Um, it should export pretty quickly. Um, I exported it with 16,000 samples, so it's a stock for um, path tracing. It looks really nice. Uh, I love all the reflections going on. And uh, to be honest, the Skinner, the Skinner mesh was kind of a big mistake. I didn't expect it to look like this. Um, but I was pretty happy with the results, so I'm going to be showing you how to recreate that now. Um, just go into Cinema, and then we're going to create a background here. Plain object, and I'm going to put it on the Z, the Z uh, rotation orientation. And then I'm going to bring in a camera. Just going to zero all this out, apart from the Z. And there we go. Uh, I'll do some camera camera tweaks later, but if we send that out just now, we can kind of build the scene along with it. I'm going to save it just in case because X Particles doesn't like to play. Very nice. I'm going to put it on path tracing to make the um, specular material look a lot nicer. This will increase the render time slightly, so just be uh, wary of that. And then the background was just completely black. Obviously, you guys can do something more creative if you feel fit. Uh, and then we're going to bring in an X particle system, um, and I also bring in a HDRI light. Uh, I mean, scene environment, whatever. <laughs> and then I'm just going to bring in a HDRI. I've been using a lot of these uh, interior scenes recently. They look really nice. They're free as well. I, I don't know where I got it from, but you guys can probably just look up something along these lines and you'll get it. Um, right, so now we can start building the emitter. So just go into emitter object and create emitter. And then we're going to use a cylinder. Uh, I'm just going to leave all this stock. I didn't, I didn't touch any of this apart from it being orientated 90 degrees. I don't know if I scaled up at all, but if we just click play we can see we've already got some emission. It emits kind of, it doesn't emit up or anything on the Y, it just, it's just kind of like the X and Z that's emitting here. So yeah, let's, I'm going to leave that to emit for like 12 uh, frames and I'm going to go into the emission tab and mess around with this. So I'm going to decrease the birth rate because I feel like this effect looks a lot better with um, less particles in the mesh. So there we have a lot less um, and pretty much everything else I, I just left stock, I didn't touch anything else. If you're using a lot of other emitters inside the scene as well, uh, check this. This was a world of pain before um, I stumbled across this because I was just having like random turbulence effects messing up what I was doing and it was quite annoying. Um, yeah, uh, now I'm going to, I think I'm just going to add this to a Skinner now. Um, I'll go back and check if I did anything else, but I don't believe I added any turbulence or anything like that. No, it's just a Skinner and the emitter. Really, really simple um, system. Uh, and then I used this unpronounceable uh, surface. For the rest of it, I just bumped the, uh, the surface level up to 100. Let's just render this so we can see what's going on. We need to add the emitter to the object here. It looks very nice now. You can see it looks pretty much identical to the final result. Um, basically, to make the uh, object look very nice, put down both the polygon size and the render polygon size lower. 
um, you could put this down much lower and I could put it down much lower even just messing around in the live viewer um, but I think it looks a lot better with a polygon size like larger um, obviously not too large so it looks very low low res like this but low enough res that it looks nice and there's also quite big bubbles that was the idea of it um, and then we add some more uh, radius to the uh, custom radius and that's what creates these bubbles um, you could create some really cool effects with the dirt shader for example in octane with this um, but I just felt it looked a lot better uh, for this scene with a specular on it so yeah you can mess around with this see what it does maybe if I close this it will update a bit better a bit faster but yeah something like 40 um, 35 to 40 I would say is pretty nice even above you get some nice results but I feel like this is kind of a, a sweet spot and then uh, we're going to do some kind of if you've ever used real flow this is kind of like using um, uh, it's like thinning it I guess it, it creates it makes it look more liquidy I guess um, add particles I don't know if this does anything to be honest adds a bit a bit to the uh, mesh but to be honest if, with the stock parameters doesn't do much um, yeah it doesn't really add much so I mean if this is slowed down your scene then just ignore it um, and that's about it I don't know if, hmm, I'm just trying to see what would look nicer maybe adding some more blur nah it doesn't matter if you use uh, quadrangles or um, tries I mean unless you're putting it into a subdivision uh, you can look at the results here like it just triangulates it so yeah uh, that's pretty much the mesh then and now we can move on to the lighting as you see really really simple setup and really quick results and now we can create the um, specular object specular material drag that on if you didn't know you can drag your um, specular through here I could put black object on it black and black material if I wanted don't see why you would um, and then from there now we can start messing around with the materials so I'm going to turn reflection down I didn't really like the look of the reflection in this I think it looks a lot nicer um, and, and quite unique actually with uh, reflection on zero and then I'm going to go into the fall off map uh, I think I put this on to cubic I don't know if that actually changes anything to be honest but I just like putting projection on cubic just in case um, and then for the, uh, the main part of this is the medium but we'll do that in a second uh, I'm just going to mess around with the fall off for a bit um, if you're in an older version of Octane this will not be the same there's a lot less options um, I've been liking this option quite a bit so I mean this is just really trial and error I wonder if this would look better with them um, that nah, doesn't change anything okay do not use frontal <laughs> right now we've got that I think I added a, a bump I don't know if I added a turbulence I think a turbulence would probably match this quite well it looks like the, the original object at least um, so something like this adds a bit more makes it look a bit more bubbly fluid like and then what really makes this is the scattering medium so from here what we can do is we can put the density to like one um, absorption get a RGB spectrum and then we're gonna grab a color of maybe like a cyan something bright though uh, purple purple was what I used originally it doesn't look as nice as the original object maybe I did use reflection yeah yeah must have been another material I was looking at then okay I 
I wouldn't put it all the way up, but something like that. And then other than that, all we have to do now is just mess around with the camera setting. Um, sometimes I don't like using neutral response, but for this I really think it makes it um, look a lot, a lot nicer. So yeah, uh, I've been using this response as well. It makes it darker, it's kind of a bluey, a bluey colour that it creates, which is nice. I don't know if I used it for this particular scene, but... It makes it look a bit too blue, I think. Oh, wrong material. Um, I'm going to mess around with this a bit. Maybe make it a little lighter. That's pretty nice, actually. I think that's looking good. Um, I might boost the light. Maybe not that much. Uh be warned that gamma really does mess up your um, a lot of noise in your scene. It'll increase the noise quite a bit. So watch out for that. I'm going to put this on 1.5 I think. Being sure to save. Uh, I've not really liked using pro po uh, post processing recently just because I feel like it removes a lot of detail from your scene but a bit can be quite tasteful so not like not like um the original Star Trek, uh, like the new, the first new Star Trek, that's confusing. You know, the one with lots of lens flares. Don't want it to look like that. Maybe 15. That adds a bit, a bit of light to it without making it look overpowered, so that's quite nice. Don't want any vignetting at all. Uh, and I'm going to decrease the hot pixel removal. Um, a lot of people will be like, oh, this the setting is just going to make my scene look really grainy and, and drag it all the way down. Um, I mean, it's, it's going to make it look really blurry and it's going to remove all the detail. But I've been using it tons recently because you can just put, you can get away with having really, really low um, sample rates uh, and still have a really nice um, grain free scene. You just have to wait for it to go, um, uh, you know, ch churn through a few more samples and it will end up looking pretty much like the original result, apart from it won't have random bits of grain like around here. Um, these bits of green are just unnecessary and you can remove them really easily by doing a setting like 0 0.5, 0 0.6 um, and it looks nice. And the good thing is that it doesn't have to refresh every time you change the hot pixel removal. So you can basically wait for the scene to finish and then see what looks better. Um, parts of the scene that look really good because of the bump are like up here where the light hits it. Um, and the turbulence is kind of really highlighted, which is really nice. Because as you can see in the original mesh, it's completely smooth. Um, if you want to smooth out some of these bits on here, some of these um, parts on the mesh, what you could do is you could add a fong angle. Uh, I don't think I did this in the original scene, but it might might make it look better. Just depends. If I absolutely put up to like 180 or something, you might see a difference. Nope, doesn't seem to do anything. Maybe if I put on triangles. Oh, I've already gone on triangles. Right, never mind. Fong angle doesn't seem to do much. And as you can see, if I decrease the polygon size, we get a bit more quality. But I just don't like the effect it creates. These little separating lines are like really emphasized. Um, and I don't like that, so I just keep it on 3. And then for the render settings, um, we could probably put the um, diffuse down to 8. Um, and if you really wanted to, you could go through reducing the uh, specular each time, just to see like when it stops uh, looking as clear as it does. But I never bothered with that because it's a, it's a still image, for one. And you're not going to be needing, you know, um, it, like to be making the scene basically go as fast as possible because it's not like 360 frames or whatever um, it's not that big of a deal in my opinion because you know this is a really short render time in the grand scheme of things see if I put this on to um, 2000 by 2000 uh, I've got a 1440p monitor so you should be able to see everything that's two hours 
and that's just with one of my GPUs so it's going to end up being you know um, it's just going to be under an hour pretty much um, but you know it's not very good for one frame but it's certainly okay for a you know if it's just a still image that you're creating which I did <laughs> so yeah uh, I hope this tutorial helps you um, if it did leave a like uh, also check out the sale going on on my self fi in my intro store if you want to go and check out some products I've got my landscape kit up there for six quid now which I've got really good response on a lot of people um, I purchased it really enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in the next video